Oh, okay. It's nine o'clock. So we'll get real. Oh, I got to remember it. Terry's got me. Where you want me? Wherever you want to be. Wherever I want. Well, I'll tell you where I want to be. And it's not standing right at this spot anymore. <laughs> anyway, I'm going there after worship this morning. So I will be traveling through the fine city of Clintonville, Wisconsin, on my way north. That is where Terry and Lance is from. No. And that, oh, you're, your mom lives there, but you're not. My sister lives there. My mom and your mom moved there. We're from Illinois. So, as, if you've driven Sorry. through... If, <laughs> <laughs> Mario. Mario. Um, if you've driven through uh, Clinton Building, you know that there's, and I'll just say this because it's going out over the airwaves. Um, there's a chiropractor in Clintonville. His name is P E N S I S. That's all I'll say. Um, but when you drive through town, your mind does all kinds of crazy things when you see that sign. Oh! <laughs> Did Ben just get it? <laughs> oh, Samantha, John just got it. Thank you, John, for singing this morning. Communion is like usual. Um, just be sure that when you are done eating and drinking, dispose of your cups and um, uh, put your mask back on before you return to your seat and socially space six feet as you come forward. Um, well, good morning to everybody who is on the computer. I see a screen porch with nobody on it but somebody oh it's my it's my own screen porch it's my <laughs> wife coming in to sit down well i thought that looked a little familiar um next weekend pastor mary farmer will be your pastor um, many of you of course know mary she was a pastor here for many years um, long before i came i'd like to say that i came to clean up the mess that she left um, and you're welcome to share that information with her uh, so she'll be here next week. Lynn is here and doing relatively fine. She had a big day yesterday, and so her hip hurt last night. But she um, uh, rubbed lard on it and took extra steak Tylenol, and it's good today. <laughs> and um, she was wearing real pants yesterday for the first time, and so we're, we're excited about that. That's why we have a sign up. But she's not wearing them today, so don't go up to the piano. It's a skirt. Uh, and then, let's see, we have a new bishop. That's what I really wanted to tell This is the announcement that is important. The rest of them were stupid. Um, Taryn and Mike were, went to the virtual synod assembly yesterday, and the end result is that Joy Mor Pastor Joy Mortensen Weeby um, won the final vote by one vote. 166 to 165, I think, was the final vote. Um, there is not a process in the ELCA for a recount, so it is all over with. Um, and she will be installed, I don't know, when do they say when? October. October, she'll be installed as our synodical bishop, finally, after a long period with interim um, Bishop Peter Rodness, who's an excellent guy, a, a great guy. Um, had been a bishop in other locations, served in this um, synod for uh, many years as a pastor. Your mask up over your nose. There you go. <laughs> um, remember to keep your mask over your nose and your mouth, or I'll point it out because it's my job to make sure that we do what we said we we're going to do. Um, so we're, thank you to Mike and Taryn for serving in that capacity and uh, being a part of the virtual assembly yesterday. With that, I will um, invite... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I got it. Terry's giving me hand signals. You don't want to know what they are. Um, but he wants me to remind you about the blood drive that's coming up September 15th. So he has a good deal of volunteers, but you are invited to go to the Red Cross website and pick a time to donate blood or to call in to Laura, who will be back this next week. Um, to make that appointment for you. Remember, you must have an appointment to donate blood, and only you can come in the building. And they, they really did, in June, they did a phenomenal job of, of managing safety within the building. So it's a, it's a pretty safe environment in this room as well. We will continue to meet in this room. What's everybody watching? You see, I can see all your heads looking out the window and ignoring the fact that I'm in the room, so I just wanted to know what's out there. Um, I'm going to have to 
talk to that committee about getting shades that you can't see up. Um, we'll, we'll keep meeting in here until um, two more, we'll meet two more weekends, and then we will return to the sanctuary. Um, but also note a, an email note, and remember you just kind of have to follow the blue welcome flag to know which door is unlocked. So, now look, if you would. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Laura, in case you didn't know, um, Colin lost Laura's wedding ring right before the wedding started last week. Somewhere in the grass around the chapel. Um, he placed somebody else's ring on her finger at the appropriate time. Um, but they found it on Monday, so her wedding ring has been found. So that will be a, they will remember that wedding forever. There's the coronavirus, they lost the ring, and then some jerky guy on a motorcycle decided to pretend like the car was not blocking the driveway. It drove right around and it roamed up the driveway in the middle of the vows to go up into the cemetery. So um, they'll, they'll have a lot of uh, memories for their special day last Saturday. Now, Lynn will play the prelude. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, prevent us from becoming your stumbling blocks. Give us the grace and love to set our hearts and minds on divine things, which include fair and equitable treatment of all of God's people. Move us to act in ways that honor you. Give us courage to take up our cross and follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Matthew chapter 16. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, 
Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of God is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of God coming in his kingdom. So what would have happened that day had Peter been successful? After Jesus announced to his followers that he would need to suffer and then be killed and then be raised, Peter admonished him. And Peter said to him, Jesus, this should never happen to you. We can't let that happen to you. Now remember last week we heard that Peter was the one who confessed that he knew who Jesus was. He said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. And now this week, and, and this story just goes on. It's not like there's a break in the story. This week, we see those disciples all together, and we see Peter interfere with God's plan for this man that Peter has just called Messiah. So although Peter recognizes Jesus' Messiahship, that was last week, today we understand that he cannot wrap his head around what this Messiah must be. Do. So Peter, like probably a lot of us, is still confused about the function of Jesus. He cannot, Peter cannot conceive that it is the role of the Son of the living God, the person he affirmed last week, that it's a role of this person to suffer and to die and to be raised. That's not what a Messiah or a king does. They do big things, right? So Peter then does what anyone would likely do. He tries to get in the way of what he thinks is wrong and what he thinks is unjust treatment. And then that raises the question, what would have happened if Peter would have been successful in that? What if Peter would have been able to stop the most significant work of the Messiah, to die and to be raised? What if Peter would have indeed gotten in the way of God's divine plan of salvation for all the people of creation? Well, the good news and the answer to that question is Peter was unsuccessful. However, it does appear that he ruffled Jesus' feathers a little bit when he made that comment. Because last week Jesus called Peter the rock, and on that rock is where Jesus started his church. This week Jesus turns to Peter and calls him Satan. Jesus told Peter to not become a stumbling block. Jesus told Peter to get his mind off human things and to start seriously thinking about the divine things. When Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, he wanted Peter to return to his proper role as a follower or as a disciple. He wanted Peter to learn from him and not to try to change Jesus' mind or try to teach Jesus about what Peter thought should be happening. So Jesus admonished Peter with those words because he did not want Peter to try to control God, but rather he wanted Peter to submit to God's thinking. So we might contemplate today how we play the role of Peter. How often do you and I attempt to become stumbling blocks 
and to get into in the way of God's divine work. How often do we set our minds on human things and not on divine things? How often do we as human beings think we know exactly what God intended? Particularly after we, we read those holy texts in our Bible and say, this is exactly what this means. So I would guess that in your lifetimes you've heard people talk about, you've heard me, not in your lifetimes, but in, in our time together over the years, I'm guessing that you've heard me talk about people playing God. Because we do that, you know. When we play God, we get in the way. And that's not what our role as divine, as created human beings is. Humans play God, for example, when we decide what the criteria is for entry into eternal life. We can't even explain what eternal life is exactly. And yet, we as Christians think that we know who can receive it. In my 63 years of life, I'm actually, I'm actually only 42, but in my 63 years, I can't tell you the number of times that I've been told that Christians, that, that I've heard Christians talk about who can and who cannot get into heaven. I don't know the number of times that I've heard people tell me that you can only share in God's promise of eternity if you believe in Jesus. Have you ever heard that? Because if you've heard that, somebody is playing God. I've been told that our job as Christians is to go out and to convert everybody to become Christians. And certainly the history of Christianity shows that we did a real, we've done a, a big job of using warfare and killing and violence to try to make other people love Jesus. Today we use legalism. We use things that, that frighten people into loving Jesus. But when we say and do those things, we're playing God. And we are getting in the way of God's divine plan. And when we think like that, when we think we know, for example, who can get into heaven and who can't, then we're putting our minds, we're setting our minds on human things and not on divine things. God can do what God wants to. If God can't, then you can't, then you don't believe that God is all powerful. If so, if God wants to save atheists, God can do that. If God wants to save people from other religions, God can do that. If God wants to save Lutherans, God can do that too. Plain Satan and getting in the way of God's work is condemned in that gospel lesson today. When we try to control God by getting in the way, we hear the same words Peter heard, get behind me, Satan. And we're told to return to our rightful roles as the followers, the disciples of Jesus. We are reminded that we learn from Jesus, not try to teach him what we think that his role should be. So we follow God's plan and we learn from Jesus when we walk with him. John's going to sing about that in a few minutes. We learn from Jesus when we attempt to imitate his actions. The Gospels are full of stories of the things Jesus did and how he reacted. We remember in those stories Jesus' willingness to forgive. Have you heard that word before? Yeah, it comes up a lot. Jesus forgave even the Roman soldiers who nailed him on a cross. We remember Jesus' willingness to cure illnesses and to remove demons from people that he didn't even know. We remember his example of feeding many, many people, of regularly forgiving sins, and, of, of then, in, of, and then of engaging in acts of kindness toward people whom his culture ridiculed. Remember how he uplifted women and children, even though his disciples didn't want them around. We remember Jesus' examples of always, and that's important, always placing the needs of people above the laws that they were called to live by when they oppressed them. 
So staying out of God's way means that we follow Jesus. It means that we don't try to lead him into what we think that he stands for or what we think he should do or how we think he should lead as the Messiah. The words that John are going to sing, John will sing in a moment, say, ask us, bleh. <laughs> the words are, let us ever, ever walk with Jesus. And then they say, and let us follow Get it? That's an important word. Follow his example pure. Those hymn words ask us to let Jesus be our guide. They do not ask us to impose our ideas. Since he skipped out of the entire summer, he is singing every weekend in September. Let us pray. God of justice, we lift to you Christ's church on earth, and we seek to be faithful and honest. Guide us to walk with Christ, to be his followers, and to keep our minds set on your divine plan. Thank you for Bishop-elect Joy Mortensen Weeby. Watch over her call. 
Thank you for the gift of forgiveness and salvation for all people. We ask for hearts that will be compassionate and concerned about justice for all of your creation. Give us courage to end racism in our hearts and all forms of systemic racism that contribute to harming your children. As we seek a vaccine for COVID, give us endurance and patience, but also wisdom to act in ways that protect each other. Give hope to all who struggle with the disease and make school systems wise in planning for staff and students. Continue to be with all farmers and those in the food industry. As we remember the 15th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina this weekend, we also lift up those who are the victims of Hurricane Laura. Come to all people who grieve today and come to those who are ill, including Georgia and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. God, you take care of us. You gave us the gift of creation and called all things and all people good. You gave us the gift of a Savior who has promised us life with you. You give us the gift of this simple meal to remind us of your presence in our lives and the promises you fulfill. At this table, we are one. At this table, we are with you. Thank you from the depths of our beings for this supper and for your great love for us. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body, it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come in, the table, the meal is ready, and it's for you. I will uncover, and Lynn will begin on this side. And, and Terry and Sue will follow, and Anita will follow me on this side.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to share the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> so how many of you know exactly what you were doing 42 years ago today? Well, oddly, somebody in, on my Facebook account posted a picture of what I was doing 42 years ago today, exactly today. I was cruising Lake Geneva in Geneva, Switzerland, 42 years ago today. I just thought I'd share, because maybe you can go home and figure out what you were doing, because I had no idea I was doing that 42 years ago today. Ben, what were you doing 42 years ago today? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs>